Ring ring cling, I'm sao. Ring ring shring, ka e i la ring. Asaka ha la ring, saka la ring. Sao I'm cling ring shring. Aum. Text five. Vrtaya panchataya klishta. Klishtaha. There are five classes of modifications, both painful and not painful. Text 6. Pramana viparayaya vikalpa nidra smritayaha. Right knowledge, Vedic instruction. Error, lack of discrimination. Delusion, confusion sleep, and memory. Namaste. So today we're going to talk about the vrittis. Uh, we already talked about what is yoga. Yoga is when the seer rests in its own state. In other words, the unmodified state. Now we're going to talk about the five kinds of modifications. Vritti. Well, why do we need to talk about that? So that we can recognize them and counteract them, which is the actual practice of yoga. Huh? What is sold as yoga <laughs> these days is 98%, I don't know what, <laughs> it's not yoga. <laughs> because they don't make any mention of samadhi, and the first chapter of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras is titled About Samadhi. So the very first chapter, the very first instruction is not about, you know, turning your body into a pretzel or putting your, your feet behind your ears or whatever. <laughs> he doesn't even mention that. He's talking about stilling the modifications of the mind. And this is exactly what Ramana Maharshi talks about, uh, what the, all the great yogis talk about, Vashishta Muni, uh, the Vedanta, all of them say that this is real yoga. So what are the vrittis? What are the modifications of the mind? Well, the first one is pramana, Vedic instruction. Pramana means right knowledge, the truth, with a capital T, because it's about the absolute. These are the things that never change, the eternal verities. So, in our life, we have so many beliefs, and so many opinions and so much different knowledge about this and that. But it's all subject to change. Even religion, we see that a person can grow up in one religion and then be converted and join another religion. Huh? Or one can have a certain political opinion and then later on, due to experiences in life or whatever, change that opinion and have a different opinion. I mean, just look at taste, for example. Taste means what we like and what we don't like. So the things that you like and don't like in childhood are very different from those that you prefer in your adulthood. See, this is common sense. If something is subject to change, how can it be the truth? Even science, material science, huh? they have so many theories and the theories change basically every generation. Huh? There's a, a, a cynical saying among scientists that science progresses through retirements and deaths. <laughs> Why? Because the structure of academia is such that 
person with a strong opinion will dominate a field until their retirement. And then the other upcoming, the, ne the next generation will establish a different opinion, a different interpretation of the facts. See, that's what a theory is. A theory is just an interpretation. So all these theories, opinions, tastes, likes and dislikes and whatever, are not real knowledge. Real knowledge is given in the Vedas. And we may like it or we may not like it, but that's irrelevant. Those are opinions. Those are interpretations. See? The same thing happens in Vedic knowledge. One kind of Vedic knowledge will be in fashion for a while, and then that will change and the society will favor a different type of Vedic knowledge. It, it doesn't matter. The truths given in the Vedanta, given in the Upanishads, these are the fundamental truths. And the truths given in the Puranas, Itihasas, the various derivative literatures and commentaries, these are all subject to change. They're opinions, they're interpretations. But for example, the Vedic wisdom says that Brahman is the absolute. Brahman and none other is the supreme. So that cannot be changed. Uh, someone may come up with some theory that someone or something else is the supreme, but it generally doesn't last too long. It's just a fashion. So what else is pramana? Well, reason. When it's used for the purpose of confirming the Vedic wisdom is also considered pramana. We'll discuss this in more detail in the next episode. So when we use our reason, when we use our intellect to verify what we've been told by the Vedas, this is right thinking. This is right wisdom. But when we use logic to quarrel with the Vedas or to try to disprove the Vedas, this is wrong thinking. If we try to justify, for example, stupid, nonsense, sinful activities, like meat eating and illicit sex and, you know, all the nonsense that people do. Even they try to claim that they're enlightened because they, they've read a book or two, but then they go on doing all nonsense. What kind of enlightenment is that? If you don't become free from these vrittis, huh? and what are the other vrittis? Viparyava means error. Viparyava, this is wrong thinking, wrong knowledge, wrong conclusions based on improper reason. So reason and logic are very powerful, but there's no <laughs> guarantee they're going to lead to the truth. Because we've all seen, for example, statistics that prove, so-called, prove things that aren't true. So any kind of logic can be manipulated to prove that black is white, up is down, <laughs> or whatever. Huh? So we're not so much interested in logic for its own sake. Mathematics, for example. This, this can be used to prove things that are true, or it can be used to prove things that are untrue. It just depends on who is doing the reasoning, who is doing the mathematics or the thinking. And then the next one, vikalpa. Vikalpa means actually bad words, <laughs> literally. But here it means confusion or delusion. We have an opinion, we've heard something from somewhere, and then we latch on to that and make it our own and think that this is the truth. Well, no, it's not the truth because you haven't experienced it. See, for example, in religion, there are religious teachers saying that, oh, uh, this is God or that is God or whatever, right? They have all kinds of very complicated 
rationalizations. But this is all vikalpa, wrong words, uh, bad words. Why? Because it leads away from the pramana, the instructions of the Vedas. So one should not be deluded, one should not be confused when hearing, for example, contradictory arguments that come to some different conclusion from the Vedas. This is why I always advise people, don't join groups. Don't follow teachers. Now, don't even follow me. <laughs> Buddha talked like this also. He said, you listen to what I say, and then you sit down and meditate and you try it for yourself. If you can verify it for yourself and it's agreed by the wise men, then it's true. Otherwise, just forget about it. It's, it's not for you. Uh, so <laughs> this is often misinterpreted by people who are in uh, confusion and delusion that, oh, you can believe whatever you want. No, because the Buddha says in that uh, very same sutra that one should also consult the opinion of the wise. So the opinion of the wise, if you look back in history, down through the ages, has always been that Brahman is the supreme. Brahman is the absolute, the pure, unmodified consciousness. So this is the real aim of yoga, to realize, not just to know about, not just to hear about or believe, but to experience that consciousness. And that's the whole idea that behind samadhi. And then finally, or we have nidra and smritayaha, sleep and memory. Well, in sleep, what happens? The ego becomes covered by ignorance and one cannot perceive anything. Now, actually, this is our original state. When the mind is unmodified and there are no perceptions, there is no consciousness even. Because consciousness requires an object and in deep sleep there is no object. So what's going on in sleep is that the perceptions are covered by ignorance. And because of this ignorance, it's not the original state. It's a vritti, it's a modification of the original consciousness. Because just to take consciousness and cover it with ego is not the same as unmodified consciousness. It's similar and it appears to be the same in many ways. But the difference is that when one is actually in Turiya or Turiya Tita, the higher states of consciousness beyond waking, dreaming, sleeping, there is no ignorance. One is in full knowledge. So the other one then is memory. What happens when we have a memory is that we relive something that happened in the past. Is it happening now? No. <laughs> Are we perceiving it with our senses? No. We're simply bringing it up from the past and experiencing an analog of it, like a picture in the mind. So this is unreality. <laughs> this is just a symbol, like any picture. So when we have memories, this also colors our perception of the present. Huh? Maybe uh, when I was young, I got bit by a dog. And so now, every time I see a dog, that memory comes up, and I don't like dogs. <laughs> so there are some really nice dogs out there. <laughs> but if you're affected by this memory, you won't see them. You'll just see the memory and the effect that it had on you in the past. So this is conditioned consciousness. See, this is vritti, modified consciousness. So we're trying to get rid of all these vrittis and return to the original consciousness, consciousness as Brahman, uh, as the source, 
as the absolute. And this is the nature of actual liberation. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti 